Once upon a time, in Lac Viet region, there was a god named Lac Long Quan. He is from Dragon Clan, with extraordinary power, he has helped the people eradicate many yukais. At the same time, in the northern mountains, there was a beautiful fairy called O Ko, she was the prettiest of the prettiest. O Ko met Lac Long Quan, and then they became husband and wife. She gave birth to a sack of hundreds of eggs, and hatched a hundred children who grew up as fast and strong as gods. One day, Lac Long Quan discussed with O Ko, I will take fifty of our children to the sea, you will bring fifty of them to the mountain, so they can protect our land. People in the sea and people on the mountains, when there is work, will help each other. O Ko and fifty children live on the mainland. The eldest son was honored as king, took the title of Hung Vong, and settled in the capital in Fong Chao, and his descendants became more and more crowded. Because of this legend, Vietnamese people are often referred to as dragon and fairy descendants. Vietnamese people also call each other Dong Bao, which means people born from the same egg sack of O Ko. The story that I just tell you is called Khan Rong Chao Ti An, or Dragon and Fairy Descendants, that every kid in Vietnam must learn in their literature lesson at primary school, to have the first concept about their origin and ancestors. Some people also says that Vietnamese are Chen Nong descendants. Is there a connection between today's main character, Chen Nong and the ancestors of Vietnamese, Lac Long Quan and O Ko? Chinese people also claims that they are descendants of Yen Huang. Yen Di is ancient tribal leader, rumors says that he is Shen Nong. So what is the truth behind this? So, let's join me on the journey discovering one of the most important god, also the most debatable ancestor of both Chinese and Vietnamese. You will find the answers to all of Shen Nong mysteries at the end of this video. It might give you some surprises. First clues about Shen Nong. In China, he is called by two words, Shen Nong. In Vietnam, Then Nong. In Japan, Shin No. All of them have the same meaning, God, Agriculture, full translation, the God of Agriculture. As you know, in the ancient times, the economy of these Eastern Asian countries were based on agriculture, especially growing rice is the core wheel of both economy and society. A wealthy and strong nation was the one which produced enough rice to feed its people, its army, and still has remaining rice to store in the government storage to use in time of disasters like drought, flood, or wartime, etc. The number of rice producing in a year was carefully noted by the local government, then it will be reported to the highest ruler, the king. When the country has continuing bad crops, it is the king duty to solve, and he himself would have to make a ceremony praying to gods for a better harvesting year. He prays to Jade Emperor, the gods ruling all gods in the heaven, and the god of agriculture, Shen Nong. Every farmer at that time knew about Shen Nong, and it is not strange that he got many myths and stories. Ancient people said that Shen Nong lived about 5,000 years ago. He is one of the three sovereigns and five emperors that I mentioned in my first video, Discover the Mystery Origin of Yin Yang, Five Elements and Bagua. Along with Fu Shi and Huang Di, Shen Nong was an ancient deity or deified king of prehistoric China. According to the 8th century, historian Sima Zhen's commentary to the 2nd century Shurji, or, Records of the Grand Historian, the homeland of Shen Nong was Li Shen Mountain, 40 kilometers north of Suezhou City, Hubei Province. It is said that the time Shen Nong just born, nine wells from the earth appeared, the water of the wells were interconnected, so that when drawing water from one well, the water in the other wells would ripple. Signaling a good luck to his tribe. Some old books wrote that, when Shen Nong is three days old, he started to talk, five days old he could walk, seven days old he had full teeth. By the age of three, he already knows how hang out on the crops field. According to Chinese mythology, recorded by Christy Anthony, 
1968, Shen Nong was described as having human body, a bull-like head, with sharp horns, copper forehead, scorpion tail and centipede legs. If those features are not odd enough for you, some folk tales I am going to tell you even says he has a transparent stomach, which is the popular thing that built his reputation. Three Famous Stories About Shen Nong The First Story Legend has it that a minister came to Shen Nong place one day, asking him to help an old man suffering from great pains. No one knew what was wrong with the poor old man or how to help him, as in those days there was no medicine or proper system of medical care. The old man passed away shortly after. This incident struck Shen Nong deeply. How could he only stand and watch while his people suffered and died? He decided to do everything in his power to expand medicinal knowledge. Every day thereafter, Shen Nong trekked into the forest and foraged for wild plants, sampling as many as he could find. He categorized them by taste and attributes, here's where his transparent stomach came in handy, and discovered which ones were poisonous and which had healing properties. In total, he identified 365 medicinal herbs, numerous fruits and vegetables, and the five staple crops of ancient China, rice, wheat, sorghum, millet, and beans, modern days calls it by the name, five grains, or cereals. Through his taste-testing adventures, Shen Nong developed an understanding of how different plants grew, what type of soil was best for different herbs, and which seasons they thrived in. That is the reason why the painting or drawing of Shen Nong always describe him holding or chewing some kind of wild grass or plants. Furthermore, Shen Nong also taught people how to make plow and axe, as well as agriculture plans for mass cultivation, preservation, and storage of foods, so his people would always have enough to eat. This marked the beginning of agriculture in China. Thousands of years later, Han Dynasty scholars compiled a book based on his findings, the Divine Farmer's Herb Root Classic, Shen Nong Ben Cao Jing. One may wonder how Shen Nong ate countless unidentified herbs each day, yet managed to avoid mishap. Has he ever get poisoned? Actually he has, and sometimes up to 70 times a day. But Shen Nong had discovered an antidote that would cure all poisons. And believe me, as strange as it sounds, this antidote may present in your kitchen right now. Let me continue the second and third story, which are connected together. The second story. Shen Nong has been known since ancient times as a wise leader, he never drank raw water. He always put a pot and boiled the water, which he will drink after tasting the herbs. One day, before the water started to boil, Shen Nong had accidentally tasted a highly poisonous grass that make him fainting. Having no ideas how much time has passed, Shen Nong woke up smelling a fragrant aroma, which immediately make his spirit comfortable. He slowly got up, using a bowl to scoop some water to drink. Shen Nong recognized the water in the pot had turned green and yellow, there were still a few green leaves hanging on it, moreover, the refreshing scent was rising from the pot. He felt the water had a slightly bitter taste, after swallowing it, it seemed to quench his thirst, the effect was far better than boiling water. A few hours later, the poison in Shen Nong body was released. Making him extremely happy, he did not expect discovering a magic drug that can both quench thirst and poisons. What is this elixir? Shen Nong began a careful search, and quickly discovered that the leaves that fell into the pot turned out to be from the nearby tree where he lit the fire. He picked a lot of leaves, brought them back to the tribe, and then took these leaves to cook and drink again, found that these soups not only have the effect of revitalizing body fluids, refreshment, diuretic, detoxification but also able to dispel fatigue. Shen Nong called the miracle plant that blooms white flowers the name Chia, which means tea. Since then, it is considered as the holy medicine of the tribe. The third story. There is in Vietnamese old sayings, Sin Ne Tu Ang Gip, that means, those that live by the sword shall die by the sword. Unfortunately, the divine farmer, another name of Shen Nong, did not always have tea at hand. The end came for Shen Nong when he sampled a strange plant called, 
asked Wan Chang Tsao. Unable to drink his antidote in time, Chen Nong died. Yet his legacy of selflessness lived on. And the extensive knowledge he left behind, the fruits of his sacrifice, has continued to benefit mankind till this day. Shen Nong Legacy Beside Herb's Records contribution, Shen Nong was credited with various inventions. Agriculture tools like hoe, plow and the plowshare, the axe. Digging wells and agricultural irrigation. Preserving stored seeds by using boiled horse urine. Market trade and commerce, the weekly farmer's market, and money. The Chinese calendar, especially the division into the 24 jiechi or solar terms. They are 24 distinctive points on the Earth's path around the sun, so basically you can use it without changing date to lunar calendar. 24 jiechi is the accurate name of Shen Nong contribution to Chinese calendar. Based on this, farmer know when to seeding, when to harvest, when it started to snow and so on. Most of Chinese agricultural date and some festivals are based on 24 jiechi to conduct. For medical inventions of Shen Nong, we have pulse measurements, acupuncture, moxibustion. About the festival or ceremony influenced by Shen Nong in China, we must talk about the harvest thanksgiving ceremony as the Laji Rite, or La Ba Festival Labajia. La is the name of the twelfth and final month, and Ba means eight, which referred to making sacrifices to eight gods at the end of the year. Eating Laba Kanji is the most important event of the festival. As Chinese belief, eating this eight ingredient soup on the eighth date brings you luck as number eight is the most favored number in China. In its original form, the festival was celebrated by making sacrifices to gods and ancestors to wish for good fortune, health, safety, and a good harvest in the new year. Later, it becomes a more Buddhism-oriented festival. And the influence of Shen Nong seems to fade away. On the other hand, since 2009, there has been an annual ceremony called the Root Seeking Festival held on May 26 at Suezhou, Hubei, Shen Nong homeland, to commemorate Shen Nong on his day of birth. The aim of this ceremony is to enhance consensus around Chinese identity and promote Chinese civilization and culture. The hosts of this event were Hubei Provincial Government, China Federation of Literary and Art Circles and other federations. To show you how differences between Chinese and Vietnamese celebrate Shen Nong Festival and the importance of this character to each country. I will put the Vietnamese related part in the end of this video. To this moment, we has been studying Shen Nong under the lenses of folk tales and stories. Now we will discover who Shen Nong really was with historical records and evidences. The Flame Emperor Listening to Shen Nong folk tales, it is easy to understand that he got many names such as Yao Wang, Medicine King Wu Gu Wang, Five Grains King Wu Gu Xiendi, Five Grains Emperor Shen Nong Dali, Shen Nong Great Emperor Shen Nong Shi, which means Shen Nong Clan Ancient historians sometimes mistaken Shen Nong and Shen Nong Clan. I think that by this reason, ancient people combined what Shen Nong works with his tribe or descendants works, to give all credits to only Shen Nong. But there is one name that bridged the gap between myths and real history, that is Yen Emperor, Yen Di, in English means Flame Emperor, who was a tribal leader in pre-dynastic times. The origin of this name was because his tribal people uphold a symbol of fire as their tribal totems or because they use a fire to clear the fields in slash and burn agriculture. Modern Chinese has a long debate has existed over whether or not the Yen Emperor was the same person as the legendary Shen Nong. That leads to an academic conference held in China in 2004 achieved general consensus that the Yen Emperor and Shen Nong were the same person. The term Flame Emperor was a title held by dynastic succession of tribal lords, with Shen Nong being known as the first Yan Di, or Flame Emperor the first, until the time of the last Flame Emperor defeat by the Yellow Emperor, may have been some 500 years. 
The reasons Chinese lead to that conclusion is because of the Battle of Banquan, Ban Chuan Zhi Zhan, Vietnamese called it Tran Phan Tui En, about 2500 BCE. It is treated as a historical fact by Sima Qian in his records of the Grand Historian, Shirji, this battle is a pivotal transition point between mythology and history. The Flame Emperor at that time, retreating from a recent invasion from the forces of Qiyu, another tribal leader, came into territorial conflict with its neighboring Yoxiong tribes, led by the Yellow Emperor. The Yen Emperor was defeated after three successive battles and surrendered to the Yellow Emperor. And the title of Flame Emperor apparently lapsed after this time, while his tribe's descendants were said to be perpetuated through intermarriage with that of the Yellow Emperor, and Han Chinese throughout history have referred themselves as the descendants of Yendi and Huangdi. In my opinion, though agree that a part of Chinese community are Shennong descendants, but the reason that title was given might be because it was the peaceful solution merging two different tribes together after the big fight. Majority of Chinese nowadays only claims to be the direct descendants of Huangdi, winner of Battle of Banquan. Now you know how Chinese view about Shennong. I will tell you a different view from Vietnamese. Shennong in Vietnamese History and Culture To clarify this, we need to take a look at the Flame Emperor's lists from old record called Xian Thua Men Lich Tu, unknown author, Han Dynasty. Vietnamese agreed that there were eight flame emperors. In Dai Viet Su Ki, the most reliable and completed Vietnamese historical records from 2879 BCE to 1675 by many Vietnamese historians, begins with this paragraph. Dai Viet was in the south of Ngo Linh, so heaven divided the north-south boundary. Our ancestor was a descendant of the Shen clan, so the heavens gave birth to a true lord, together with the northern dynasties, on each side existed an emperor. Another page written. King De Min, who is the third grandson of Shen Nong, went to patrol the south, went to Ngu Lin Mountain, now in Hunan Province, China, met a fairy, got married and gave birth to a son named Lok Tuk. De Min passed the throne to his eldest son, De Gi, as king of the north, from Ngu Lin Mountain to the north, ordained Lok Tuk as king of the south, from Ngu Lin Mountain to the south, called Qin Duong Vang, who became king of Zich Kui in the year Nam Tua 2897 BCE. Later he married the daughter of Dong Din Ho Quan, also known as then Long Dragon God, who was Long New Dragon Girl, born Sung Lam. He succeeded to the throne, titled Lak Long Quan. Lak Long Quan married the daughter of King De Lai, the son of De Gi, whose name was O Ko, and gave birth to 100 sons. One day, Lak Long Quan told O Ko, I am from Dragon Clan, you are from the fairies, the fire and water are incompatible with each other, it is difficult to get along with each other. They said goodbye to each other. Fifty children with their mother went to the mountains, fifty children followed their father to the sea, some versions wrote Nam Hai, means the South Sea, and named the eldest son. As Hung Vong, succeeding the throne. Based on these writings, we could draw a family tree like this. It seems like both Lak Long Quan and Oko had the bloodlines of Shen Nong, with Oko stayed at the main branch and Lak Long Quan at the sub-branch. In real history, there is a chance that the the Flame Emperor IV, De Min married a woman from Bak Viet tribe, Bai Yu, in times he traveled to Ngo Lin, a mountain located in Bak Viet tribe territory, and De Min branched, descendants became one of Bak Viet tribes. These people were clearly ancestors of modern Vietnamese. The first king, leader of Lac Viet tribe, who united all others Viet tribes together was a historic character called Hung Vong, Xiong Wang. He established Van Lang country from the time 696 to 682 BCE at the same time of Zhou dynasty in China. His succeeders took over and ruled the country over the next 500 years. Now let's talk about Vietnamese festival that worshiped Shen Nong. 
Lutich Dayin is celebrated on the seventh day on the first month of lunar calendar, which may occurs on late January, sometimes on February. The meaning of this festival is to praying for a good harvest and developing agriculture. There are some activities like making the statue of Shinnong and buffalo and other small ceremonies. But the most important event is when the king or the leader of the country goes to the paddy field and plow with a buffalo for a while, after that would be the turns of high officials. This custom's first hosted in spring 987 by Lu Dai Han in his homeland, Hanam province and being kept for a long time until the time of Kai Din King or Nguyen Phuc Bu Dao, 1916-1925. After many years of corruptions due to wars, since 2009, this festival regained its meaning and fame, with the name Lu Hoi Tich Dai In Doi San, at Tian Sun, Duwei Tian, Hanam Province. In 2010, President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam Nguyen Minh Tri at wore peasant costume and conducted the ceremony. This action was to educate all classes of people, especially the younger generation, to be grateful to their ancestors, and actively develop agricultural production. In Luong Phong, Heap Hoa, Bak Jong has the custom of worshipping Shen Nong associated with the ceremony of praying for rain. It is hosted annually on the 10th day of the 10th lunar month, the villagers hold a traditional festival. In drought years, the village established a ritual table for three days. The main activity is the elders walking from the beginning of the village to the end, smashing a wooden peak, saying prayers to Shen Nong help them to have a bowl of water, the villagers will follow the elders and do the same thing. Furthermore, there is Wai Sun Festival, Hoa Sun Commune, Heap Hoa, Bak Jong Province has the custom of carrying a special tree made by many plants to give thanks to Shen Nong and hope for good weather, less disasters. Shen Nong, whether an individual or a clan, is very important in Asian cultural history, especially when it comes to myths and folklore. I tried my best to collect the most accurate informations and facts about Shen Nong to make this video. Because there are so many things to discuss around this character, please let me know if I miss something. Just put down you think in the comment below and I will surely read it out. I hope that you guys find this video interesting. Please hit the subscribe button, like, and share to support Asian Wisdoms to do more videos like this. Again, I am John. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.